So I'd like to just take a couple of minutes to talk about Leibniz or Leibniz notation and respect. Now, interestingly enough, Sir Isaac Newton and Gottlieb Leibniz invented calculus roughly at the same time, which sort of speaks to the way that discoveries happen. They also used two different styles of notation. The one that we use the most today is the Leibniz notation. Newton's notation was actually kind of cumbersome to use, and they even think that maybe calculus, as it was practiced in England, was slowed down a little bit because Newton's notation was a little inefficient. Now, when we did our fundamental definition of the derivative, we were adding this horizontal quantity, and we called it h. And we were taking the slope of our secant based on the idea that rise over run could be calculated this way. The function at x plus h minus the function at f uh, divided by h. And then to find the slope of the tangent, we took the limit as h approaches 0 of the slope of that secant. And so in Sketchpad, of course, this is what it looked like. There we go. H is shrinking down. The secant is coming close to being a tangent as H gets closer and closer and closer to zero. Now we use H because it helps us to sort things out, and the notation is a little bit easier to use. More widespread is the use of the quantity expressed as delta X. And you'll see that it is a little bit confusing if you're first learning calculus when you're using delta X. So here we are. The Exactly the same idea, only instead of an h, we're using a delta x for our change in the horizontal position. And now, to simplify it a little bit further, we're using delta y to indicate our change in the vertical position. And in Sketchpad, this is, of course, what it looks like. You'll notice that my horizontal distance is delta x now, and my vertical distance is delta y. Basically, we remember this from a long time ago. This the slope of a secant like that can be calculated as delta y divided by delta x. And as you can see, my limit becomes the limit as delta x approaches 0 of the change in y, delta y divided by the change in x, delta x. Once we take that limit, we call it the limit as delta x approaches 0 of delta y divided by delta x. Well, we simplify it into dy dx. And that means take the derivative of y with respect to x. So we're interested in the rate, or the ratio of the change in y as x changes. So it's the change in y relative to the change in x. So that's why we end up saying the derivative with respect to x, because that's the quantity we're interested in changing. Another way the Leibniz notation gets expressed is the change in the overall value of the function with respect to x, or the change in the rate of change of the function as x changes. So there's a m moderate change in the next activity, actually. You're going to be examining the height of a windmill tip at time t. And there's an example relationship of how the height and the time are related to each other. So in this case, you're not going to be taking the derivative of y with respect to x. You're going to be taking the derivative of h with respect to t. So we're interested in the rate of change of height as time changes and expressed in words, uh, to find the velocity, take the derivative with respect to t.